So hello there YouTubers, today I'm going to be unboxing a home theater in a box system. It's made by Sony. Um, this unit is basically the model um, B as in uh, Beaver, or D as in David, V as in Victor, dash E as in Edward 280, so that's B, D, V, e dash E 280. And this is a uh, home theater system. It has um, a Blu-ray um, player in it that is also uh, 3D ready. Um, it has two HDMI inputs so that you can input the other components such as an Xbox or a, a digital cable box uh, Whichever you prefer to go in through the HDMI input. So um, has um, Limited connectivity I guess for some things uh, if you have more than two devices you would like connect to your um, audio system Though keep in mind that it is a blu-ray player. So basically uh, that internally will decode the sound and such So you really have three things going on the blu-ray player and then the two um, Units that you connect via the HDMI. You could also use it so that um, I believe that you can have the audio uh, come from your television. So we'll get into that more as we'll um, uh, Take a look at an unboxing. Uh, so this unit has uh, a nice few features in it uh, You'll see up on the top that it's a uh, full 1080p um, you can play DVDs, uh, Dolby True HD, and the um, uh, DTS HD. Uh, it also has a wireless uh, LAN ready. Uh, though in order for you to connect wirelessly, you do have to purchase the Sony dongle. And since it's being Sony proprietary equipment, uh, the accessories do cost quite a bit, uh, similar to any other proprietary company like Apple or um, any company that use, makes you use their equipment instead of something universal. There is a workaround for it though, since this does have an ethernet port on it, you can purchase yourself a wireless bridge. And what that will do is we'll trick this unit into thinking that it's connected through the ethernet. Um, the wire comes from the back of the ethernet port into the wireless bridge and then the wireless bridge makes it wireless to your uh, router or modem. Um, the um, benefit to the bridge is first of all, it costs around the same price as the wireless dongle. And since it's universal and usually has more inputs on it than just one, you can connect the other devices near this, uh, the bridge. So if you want to connect an Xbox uh, or anything that needs to go wireless uh, via the via Apple television product or something like that, uh, you certainly can with the bridge. So if you're going to connect this and you do not have the capability going wired through the ethernet, I would not recommend purchasing the Sony on wireless dongle, I'd go out and get a wireless bridge. Uh, so um, these home theater in a box systems, a lot of times uh, people do kind of uh, make fun of them because they're trying to be, uh, be the be all end all. Um, uh, not really uh, great at anything, but it has a lot of options. Uh, that is exactly true. It's not going to be as good as um, dedicated components like an audio video receiver and um, um, properly matched speakers. Um, purchase separately um, though those will cost quite a bit more so if you're looking for if you're not a home audio enthusiast or your budget doesn't fit looking for um, a bigger sound solution or maybe you're looking for uh, to increase the performance of your LCD or plasma television in a bedroom because of the lackluster onboard audio then these um, home theater in a box systems uh, make a great a, a deal basically as they are a fairly good price so I tend to purchase electronics uh, as they go into the next model I purchased the last model I'm not an early adopter um, and pay full retail price for things when they first come out I tend to wait a little uh, so that's why this unboxing would be later uh, down the line than what most people would do unboxings for when they're brand new um, because I uh, purchased this unit for $170 Canadian plus taxes so be just under $200 taxes in when they first came out it would have been $399 possibly more um, and, and this year's models would be priced equivalently around the same price so you're looking at um, almost uh, half price uh, on purchasing this and it has all the features that I need so um, let's uh, get into unboxing the unit. Uh, so just bear with me here as I open this up for you. As I've said in my other videos actually, I've learned a trick over the years and that is to open electronics, even televisions and things from the bottom. So I'll do that actually in this case right now. And the reason for that is it comes out nicely and um, or if ever in the future, for whatever reason, you open this and you want to return it, 
um, because it's missing something or it wasn't exactly what you thought it was. Sometimes when you open up electronics, they give you quite the hassle when you try to return it um, because they see that the tape is broken, but a lot of times they won't check the bottom. So you keep your seal, you keep the seal looking perfectly new on the top and you open it in from the bottom. Now, if I take this unit and the same thing as if you're opening a television, if you take it and then you take your flaps and put it to the side and also tip down this flap as well and go on an angle with it and then really quickly basically push it down the it doesn't fall out because of the motion and the tension on the box as it falls down so now it's actually perfectly there so now when i open this up sometimes things do fall out in the house back though like um manuals and possibly a remote control or something so we'll see Push it in a little bit. Now I'll open it up. Oh, that came out good. So now you can see the top is still sealed with the sticker and everything on it. But I have to retape the tape from the bottom. Um, I don't usually do that. Just it, it still makes return things after I purchased it, but it still makes it for unboxing things a lot better because now it's basically uh, right side up like it was exactly in the box without the box. So this is exactly how it was put in. Uh, from the top. So here as you can see is the remote control and the um, some wire accessories and the manual. So let's get out this remote control so you get a better look at it. So here's the remote. I'm gonna rush through this a little bit so we get at the actual unit because I'm running a little out of time. I'm gonna run out of time here. Uh, so here you have a USB cable, and this does come with an iPod dock, so I'm thinking that may have something to do with that. I'm not sure what the USB for would be cable would be other than that. Um, this is the antenna for the radio. It looks like FM um, antenna. I do believe I've read somewhere that this may not have AM. So if you're interested in AM radio, you may want to look into that because I believe it may only be FM, not 100%, but it's definitely something to look into. So if you connect to the internet media, you could probably get all your AM stations through that easily enough uh, through the internet. Uh, it comes with a, um, I guess that's an optical an optical cord, just like your component or RCA cable, except it's a single and possibility for optical. Um, let's uh, take a look at the manual, some old jazz. It uh, looks like the manual does come in. Uh, ripped it, taking it out. Um, that's French and English. So being in Canada, it comes with French. I'm not sure if you, if this is an American model, if it would have that or not. It comes with two Sony batteries as well. <clears throat> so let's take a look at the actual main brain unit here. Because if we run out of time, this is what we really all probably want to see is what uh, it looks like and what uh, the back looks like. So here's the front. It ships um, with no... No plastic, which is surprising, because most electronics you see does have a peel-off protective plastic. This one does not. Um, on the front, it has an eject button, play. Oops, sorry about the audio there. Uh, eject button, play, stop, function, um, volume up and down. Um, it does have quite the click to it. Put it towards the mic so you can hear it. Sounds kind of plasticky. This is all plastic here and it does have kind of a harsh click. Your power button is also over here as well. I don't know how well you can see that with the reflection of the light. Um, so on the back, let's see what we have here. We have FM coaxial. Looks like 75 ohms antenna for your radio. You have audio in, so that's your right and your left audio. Uh, uh, digital optical in um, so it doesn't have digital coaxial 
which I was thinking that the other cable was for. So you would have to go out through your television um, with um, fiber optic, which is, I thought it may have coaxial. Uh, I have to look at that a little further for my unit. Maybe I will be putting this back in the box because I would like to use the television as a switcher to expand the more HDMI options to go through the audio. So I'm sure I can figure out some kind of solution. Um, USB, so I guess you can put uh, different things in there. I'm not sure if you can just, that's probably just for the dongle. I'm not sure if it'll accept a USB uh, stick for movies and DivX, NextVid, and things like that. There's your LAN port so that you can connect your dongle or your wireless Ethernet cable or your wired Ethernet cable in there. Your HDMI 1 and 2. Um, your HDMI out so that it goes out to your television. And there's your speaker color coordinated ports so uh, this one here says front right left front left subwoofer center sub right and sub left so or sorry surround right and surround left uh, so basically um, it has a proprietary speaker connectors on so you can easily know which one goes into which and it snaps in instead of having to use those little things like speaker wires so easier to plug in though the negative to that is if you have your house wired with speaker wire uh, you will have the patch in uh, splice into the actual speaker wire so that you can utilize these connectors which is easily enough with speaker wires but it can be a bit of a pain uh, if the gauge of the speaker wires is thin when you splice them so here and here you'll see I believe it's the iPod dock. Whoops. There you go. iPod dock. model tdm as in mary so t as in tom d as in david m as in mary dash i p as in peter three zero dock for ipod iphone there you go with these um plastic ties it's generally a good idea if you haven't got a knife to find where they join and then try to peel it from the back side. It's usually easier. I'm not gonna do this with a knife. I'm gonna do it with my hands. There you go. So that came off fairly easy. So there's the join again there. Oh, it's coming apart in the middle where I took that one off. I'm just gonna take it from the back side and then peel it. There you go, you get your um, one, two, three, four, five. So you get your center speaker and your left and right front and left and right rear. So there's the Sony, Sony name. And the speaker, the grills doesn't come, don't come off. That's, they're labeled in, individually on the back. They also have a little, those one of those little scan things there where you can scan your phone. I guess it tells you information about it. This says model number SS-CTB102. It says magnetically shield it, so that's great. If you're putting it next to your electronics, it won't put those ribbon rainbow colors and interfere with your television, especially the tube televisions. And there's your connectors that you have on the end, the proprietary connectors, so you'd actually have to splice into here. The gauge is fairly thin, but definitely not as thin that makes it undoable. They do have uh, wall mount uh, options there for screws so you can wall mount these. So rather than, I mean, I'm running a little bit low on time, and rather than uh, show you every individual speaker, um, I will, as I'm on opening this here, basically saying uh, my username is Mixed Reports. Um, I would appreciate if you subscribe. I will do a lot more unboxings as time goes on. So please subscribe. It's username uh, Mixed Reports.